Welcome to Pulse episode 80. In this episode, we're going to take a look at patch 1.3.3 and all that's coming with it, the end of win-loss trading, a Dustin Browder Heart of the Swarm interview, lots of tournament news and updates, even more art and image updates, some funny and entertaining StarCraft themed music, and much more. Let's get to it. As a lot of you probably already know, StarCraft 2 Wings of Liberty patch 1.3.3 is currently in development and available for testing on the public test regions. Now, Blizzard may well claim that this is a minor patch, but to all the Protoss players out there, this one could well turn their four gating worlds upside down. But okay, let me not get ahead of myself here, let's check the bigger changes out. For Protoss, Archons are now massive units. Okay, so what does this mean? And does it matter? Well yes, it does. Massive units can destroy force fields by just walking over them, and I guess that can be good or bad. But, massive units can also not be picked up by Phoenix Graviton Beams, and are also not affected by Marauder Concussive Shells. Those last two parts are definitely good. Next up, Pylon Power Radius has been decreased from 7.5 to 6.5. This was most likely done just so that Terran players can actually do something about a Protoss player warping units into their base. Now for the big ones. Research warp gate time has been increased from 140 to 180 seconds. Let me just say that 40 seconds is a lot of time, and Blizzard did make up for this change by doing the following. Sentry train time decreased from 42 to 37 seconds. Stalker train time decreased from 42 to 37 seconds. And lastly, and lastly, Zealot training time has also been decreased from 38 to 33 seconds. And yes, for those of you wondering, warp gate train times remain unchanged. So basically, this means you can now use warp gates or gateways. Yes, there's actually a choice now, and you may well see players mixing it up a bit when this patch hits. Mostly early game though. Pretty interesting, and I'd love to know what you guys think about these seemingly huge Protoss changes, so let me know below. For Terran, we saw Bunker Salvage resource return reduced from 100 to 75%, and Ghost Costs changed from 150 minerals and 150 gas to 200 minerals and 100 gas. I kind of agree with these, free bunkers were a little silly, and Ghosts felt a little hard to get into play. Lastly, the balance changes for Zerg, well, they just saw the root time on Spore Crawlers decreased from 12 seconds to 6 seconds. That's pretty nice. In the bug fixes, they fixed a bug where ghosts could not quickly EMP the same location twice, and another bug where players were still able to stack flying units on top of each other. Yes, that silly viking flower just wouldn't die. Overall, quite an interesting patch, and I can't wait for it to go live and see how it changes things. If you want to read the full patch notes, you can in fact do so below. And hey, as I mentioned, don't hesitate to let me know what you think about all these upcoming changes in patch 1.3.3. In a somewhat unexpected turn of events, we actually have a few patch 1.3.3 extras to look at. Can I get a yay? Well, okay. First up, we have a few unlisted changes. It seems like two new maps have been added on the PTRs. Now, these are not in the ladder map list or anything like that. They've just snuck their way in and they're just chilling for now. Plunder Isle and Test Map 5. The latter is apparently based on New Antioch. And yes, some of you might well know Plunder Isle from Warcraft 3. Quite cool and well worth checking out if you find yourself on the PTR. Other than those, you can see what Liquid Tyler had to say about the changes in the upcoming patch. In short, he said he was tired of casual play negatively affecting pro play. This was aimed at the 4-gate changes. What do you think about that? Do you agree? Read more below. In some slightly smaller, but still very much appreciated news, Blizzard recently issued another round of account suspensions and bans to StarCraft 2 players who were in fact in violation of the Battle.net terms of use for cheating and or using hack programs while playing. In addition to undermining the spirit of fair competition that's essential to play on Battle.net, cheating and hacking can lead to stability and performance issues with the service. So yes, that's all very official, but unofficially, I gotta say, it's great to see those hackers burn. There was no word on how many were sniped, but hey, any bans are good bans. Tying in with the bans, Blizzard Blue Post and Etheria recently issued a warning that the practice of purposefully losing games and or automating gameplay can be met with suspension from the game, revoking of achievements and portraits earned, or permanent closure of the account. If you're found to be automating your gameplay or purposefully losing games or win trading, your account will come under scrutiny and the aforementioned actions may be taken. Yes, 
Ouch. So those portrait farmers out there, your days are numbered. Great stuff and much appreciated Blizzard. Keep it up. In some semi-Starcraft related news, South Korea's National Assembly will apparently soon vote on a curfew law preventing children from under the age of 15 from playing online games from midnight until 6am. Website Charles Nilbo reports that the National Assembly's Legislation Committee voted unanimously to pass the bill this Wednesday. One thing worth noting though is that the law would not in any way affect offline or console games. Sure, this may not be fun at all for those up and coming pro gamers in South Korea and I will say that my first reaction was not a good one, but thinking about it a little, I think this will probably do more good than bad for more than a few people. I mean really, you can definitely get enough hours of gaming in before 12am, so I'm pretty sure everyone will survive. Read more below if you're interested. Here we go, a piece of news I have no doubt all of you will appreciate. The website Game163.com sent out an interview team to interview one of the big boys at Blizzard. And hey, profit. Below you can find quite a juicy interview between the Game163 team and Dustin Browder, who all of you no doubt know is the lead designer on StarCraft 2. So what makes this interview so special? Well, he has quite a bit to say about Heart of the Swarm. The interview is split into two parts, and one was conducted on the 27th of April and the next on the 28th. Dustin has quite a lot to say about, well, everything. non hot of the Swarm topics include things like the fact that the data says Zerg isn't actually a weak race, and until they feel the map is perfect enough, they won't be revealing any more information about Blizzard Dota just yet. Blizzard plan on adding or mixing up the ladder maps every single season, reminding us that each season will last about three months. They're not ready to reveal any details about any clan systems for StarCraft 2 just yet. And there was a big no comment on the possibility of a StarCraft movie coming out. On the topic of Heart of the Swarm, Dustin says that the only real thing he can say is that Heart of the Swarm will differ from Wings of Liberty in many, many different areas. Much of Heart of the Swarm will be talking about the story of Sarah Kerrigan and many things will be happening to her. And she might be attacked quite a number of times too. Now that does sound exciting. He also says, obviously, that she has changed quite a bit, and you probably know this already if you finish Wings of Liberty. In Heart of the Swarm, her character and how she appears will undergo many changes, and we might see many different versions of Sarah Kerrigan. However, the final image can only be finalized and confirmed at the release of Heart of the Swarm. And thinking about that for just a second here, imagine how cool the Heart of the Swarm box art will be. Anyway, all that said, the interview was really good and he had some pretty interesting stuff to say. I guess Dustin didn't really want to reveal too much just yet, as there is that expected Heart of the Swarm press conference coming up at the end of May that he obviously doesn't want to spoil. So if you are interested at all, you know exactly where to look. Time for the tournament and event news and to start it off with the GSL updates. The GSL Code S has moved into its round of 16 and things are most definitely getting quite crazy. Why? Well, there were already tons of new names in the top 16 this season and, well, the top 8 is starting to look just as fresh, if you get what I'm saying. And yes, sadly for all those foreigner supporters out there, both Jinro and Huck have dropped to the up and down matches. So on day 1 of the round of 16 we saw, yes, spoilers incoming, OGS top take down OGS supernova, OGS nada beat MVP genius, sc 4 take down Pult Prime and lost the I am Losira Dispatch Slayers Alicia. The second play day is set to happen on Saturday, April the 30th, so be sure to catch that if you can. In the code A, we've just moved into the round of 16. In the first code A round of 16 play day, we saw Slayers MMA continue his run by taking OGS Hyperdub out, ST Bomber took down I am Nuts, Slayers Ryung took down Creator Prime Wii, and sadly for all the Emperor fans out there, TSL Alive took down Slayers Boxer. In the second play day, we saw MVP Violet absolutely destroy Slayers Yu-Gi-Oh, I am MVP take down Slayers Min, Keen take down Van Vanth, and Koka beat Noblesse. Those are all the results I have for you for now, but it's not over yet. Let's have a look at the GSL extras. In the extras, firstly, there have been some pretty crazy comments and, well, crazy criticism about the strange outfits the Code A casters were wearing a couple of days ago. Have a look at them. What more can I say? Next up, the guys over at Team Liquid have revisited the Slayers March GSTL. There are a bunch of amazingly sexy photos to look at of the players, Tastosis, Doa Trap, 
Junker, and more, courtesy of the guys over at wellplayed.org. Then there's a great tour of the incredible Miracle House, once again courtesy of Artosis and Wani. They also did a couple of really cool interviews with the IM players while there, so you should check those out too. There are interviews with both Code A casters, also from Artosis, and then you can watch a really cool over the shoulder video of TSL Bomber playing a TVZ. Fun stuff. Lastly, the guys and girls from over at GOM TV have released a couple of videos depicting the professional and personal life of Marine King Prime and I am Losira, their practice regime, preparations, family and much more. Well worth checking out and you can find all those extras linked below. In the NASL we've already moved into week 3, but first let's see what happened with the remainder of week 2. Week 2, Day 3 saw Slush take down Heypro, DDE beat Axlav, Nada beat Moonglade, Naniwa beat Kawai Rice, and Strelok beat Squirtle. On Day 4 of Week 2, Hasu Obs took down Goody, Machine beat Brat OK, Select took down Cats, Ace beat Starlife, and in quite an upset, MC lost to Rhett. On the last day of Week 2, Day 5, we had Tyler take down Druby, Sock beat Pain User, Xenio beat Mana, Idra take down Cloud, and Boxer beat Sen. That was week 2, now time for week 3. On the first play day of week 3, we saw Phoenix beat Vibe, Kiwi Kaki beat Moro, Moon destroy Artosis, Sheth beat Grubby, and TLO quite spectacularly dispatch Rainbow. In the last of our NASL results, on playday 2 of week 3, we saw White Raw take down Cruncher, In Control beat QXE, Dark Force deny TT1, In Snare beat Momin, and lastly, July take down Sho. Quite a lot of exciting matches, and as usual, if you're keen to see any of those VODs or check up on the results, head on over to NASL.tv for the lot of it. Sadly, no North American Star League drama today. On the TSL3 side of things, we've already moved into and completed the round of 8. Yes indeed, quite exciting stuff. In the round of 8, we saw Cass take down Adelscott, Thorzane beat MC, Naniwa beat Cruncher, and Hasuobs take down Boxer. So there you have it, your top 4. Quite a bunch of players, but sadly, no Zergs. Team Liquid have an amazing recap up of the games and interviews with all the winning players, so you can check that out below if you're interested. The next games are only set to happen in about a week's time, so there's still quite a lot of time to wait for those. In the TSL Extras, well, Extra, since the TSL 3 is on break this week, the guys from Team Liquid decided to do something special. They're running a special episode of TL Attack. Yes, the same thing that they did during the beta, so if you're either unfamiliar with what it is or just want to read more about it, you can do so over at teamliquid.net. Chill, DJ Wheat and TLO are going to be taking part in that, by the way. In the next big set of tournament and event news, we're taking a look at the quite popular IPL or IGN Pro League. I myself have been really enjoying the games in this league and, well, the production value of the IGN streams, VODs and sites are just making things so much more fun. As far as the results are concerned, the first week of playdays has already been completed and the second begun. We've already progressed to the upper bracket finals as Select took down Cats to get there and Idra destroyed Kiwi Kaki to join him. That leaves Cats, Kiwi Kaki, Axlav and Vibe in the lower brackets. Yes, I sort of compressed the results a little for you, but hey, if you want the full details, want to see those VODs, or read those interviews with the players, you know exactly where to look. And remember, keep checking back here soon for more IPL goodness. In two quick, smaller tournament updates, we have results from the recent Gathering event and the StarCraft 2 tournament at the Copenhagen Games. At the Gathering, we saw some great StarCraft 2 action with Sasse and Sho making it to the finals. Sho proved the more experienced or imbalanced player of the two, though, taking the series with a score of 4 2 and claiming the Gathering's first place prize, nearly 4,000 euros. The Copenhagen Games ended with a Cass vs. OGS MC final, where MC stated his dominance once more by crushing Cass with a score of 4 0. He took home just over $4,000 himself, no doubt making the tournament well worth playing for him. You can find the full results and all the other details you could ever want from both these events below. So with that done, let's head on over to the tournament and event smalls. Over at Team Liquid, you can read about the AKA Friendly Gaming Tournament. You can read about the World Cyber Games USA qualifiers and when they're set to happen. You can check out the $2,000 Saga City Invitational 2011. Over at MIM, you can get some updates on the FX Open 3 and the StarCraft 2 Clan League. 
You can also read about the Stars War round of 32, which is just being completed. And over at Gosu Gamers, you can check the results out for the Razer Gosu Cup qualifier number 2. Then there are some VODs to check out from an elite coaching show match between Naugrim and Tarson. Next up, Hawk won the Texas Open. And lastly, the full schedule for the MLG 2011 circuit has been revealed. In the art and I guess image updates, we'll be starting with the official. The Blizzard fan art section has recently been updated with new artwork from our community peers. Check below to take a look at the new works based on the StarCraft universe. Good stuff and you can see my personal favourite on your screens right now. Then we've got a whole bunch of wallpapers from a whole bunch of different users on Reddit. It seems like there was some wallpaper making bug going around and everyone caught it. I won't complain though as some of these are really cool. Check them out, check all of them out and get them in full size below. Sticking with the wallpapers for a second here, we've got one that's just a little bit more impressive than the others. This one is of the Gorilla Terran. Yes, it does look good and I have no doubt that more than a few Jinro fans will be sporting this on their desktops shortly. Next up, a pretty cool Nick Tasteless plot comic. Quite interesting. Yes, just call me Tasteless. Another comic, this one titled More Drones. Well worth a read, check it out in full size below. Ever wondered what StarCraft 2 would look like if it was all to scale? If a mothership was the size it was meant to be? Well, this fan did, so take a look and hope it never comes to pass. Enjoy. Then, a cute infester that just wants a shiny. Oh. Then we have a look at a zealot taking on a marine in some more fan art. Next up, for all the Zerg fans out there, we have a Zerg base made of clay. Very interesting. Starcraft in Minecraft? Why not? Check this command center out that was built in Minecraft for all the Terran fans out there. Then we have a pretty interesting couple of series of images that have been popping up on the well-played forums titled Where's Seller? These are a Where's Waldo type of thing and I'm not sure how all these came about, but they are damn funny and it's pretty hard to find that happy camper in some of them. Check a lot of them out below, there are quite a few. State of the game? Nah. State of the ferret. Yes, it seems like Artosis was not to be outdone. Funny and cute. Then, in some more state of the game news that's not actually art related, we have Idra saying that if the StarCraft community can get over 20,000 viewers on the next state of the game, he'll be doing a week of live commentary and analysis on his stream. Sounds like a good time to me. In some more Artosis goodness, you can see what the one half of the cast in Archon had to say about the Protoss plane Cruncher. A warning to all Cruncher fans out there, it's not pretty. Here we have some pretty damn amazing StarCraft paper models. Yes, these are handmade from paper by a blogger named Constable. You can even download the plans to make these at his blog. Check them out and enjoy. So keeping the best for last are we? Most definitely. What you're looking at now is not some millionaire's holiday retreat. Nope. This is the soon to be FXO team house. Yes, I was pretty shocked too. It looks absolutely stunning. The house is in Kuala Lumpur and the FXO team, or however many of them are willing, will be moving there in the next month or two. You can head on over to the Team Liquid forums or just check the links below for the full list of photos and the full stats of the house. Definitely worth having a look at. Phew, with all those done, let's have a look at what's been happening with the StarCraft 2 music in the past week. There's indeed quite a bit of interesting stuff here. First up, we have Forever Bronze from the guys over at AKA Gaming. This song is a cover of Forever Young by Alphaville and was apparently inspired by some words that community manager Daxari over at the StarCraft 2 forums posted. Still, pretty cool and most definitely worth checking out. Then we have StarCraft the Musical from the guys over at StarCraft Inc. This is a rappy, dancey beat that is quite catchy indeed. Check that out right here on YouTube and enjoy. Apparently if they get up to 100 likes they will be releasing an MP3 for download for free. Then, as the last of the musical entries, we have a Bruno Mars Grenade parody titled Quarter Grenade from the longtime song creator Tempo. He does warn everyone that he can't sing exactly like Bruno Mars. But still, it's quite a great tune and I'm sure a few of you will enjoy it. You can check that out right here on YouTube. That may have been the last of the song and dance updates, but here we have another YouTube video. This one has slightly more entertainment value. The Litterbox is back for a brand new episode and hopefully entire season of StarCraft 2 Micro Fails. 
This is brought to you by Cat's Pajamas on his YouTube channel, and these fails are cast by himself and none other than the GSL Code A caster, Doa. I have to say that the first episode is pretty funny, and all you lag TV fans out there will most definitely get a kick out of this one. Check it out and enjoy. Now let's head on over to the community smalls. First up in the smalls, over at the official site, you can read about Achievecraft number 5, Solitaire. There's a poll up titled Big Law, and then over at SK Gaming, you can read a post titled The Rise of the Nerd Reich. This one was done by someone that you all no doubt know, Choburpion. There's a cloud interview by Kaldor over at Mim, and there's a two-part Mondragon interview also from Mim. Then you can check out an MC interview over at Fnatic, a pretty interesting Kelly Milkies interview over at Polar Fluke, a GG Lost Shadow interview over at Gosu Gamers, a JP McDaniel interview over at WoW Insider, an interview with Prey Thorzane and Prey Nightend on Team Liquid, an interview with Six Jack Skew right here on YouTube. A Spanishwa interview that you can also find right here on YouTube, courtesy of Complexity Gaming. And it seems like Swedish television is not done with StarCraft 2 just yet. There's apparently a new show coming up that will feature Jinro, Idra, Huck, and many others. You can read about that below. And lastly, Sundance from over at MLG is hinting at Tastosis. Nothing else there, he has been pretty cryptic about it. So sadly, that is all I have for you in this most lengthy of StarCraft Pulse episodes. I hope you all got enough StarCraft 2 goodness, and I hope you're all having a great weekend thus far. Remember to like the video, favorite it, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Most importantly though, happy StarCrafting.